break 80, shooting in the 70s consistently. It's not about raking bunkers, it's about not going in them. But if you do go in them, these ideas are gonna help you because unfortunately, we're rubbish out of these. We need to get better. So let's look at what you are doing in the Arcos database. Remember this series as well is consumable on my podcast, the Hack It Out Golf Podcast, if you're driving and you wanna to listen to these great tips. So from 15 yards off the green, yep, only 15 yards off the green. When we look at greens hit from this position in a bunker, we see that people who are struggling to break 80 are only hitting the green 74% of the time, yep only hitting the green 74% of the time. And the players who are shooting in the 70s more consistently, they're hitting the green 85% of the time. So it's a noticeable difference from only 15 yards away from the flag from the bunker between the two demographics of golfers. So the first skill really is, how do we get out of these bunkers every time? So the thing that you see, which is so common, is that people are scared of the big fin, you know, the one where they're giving it a big confident swing and it's gonna go like 50 yards and hit the cars over the other side. And I get that, but the trouble with that is it makes people panic. They're scared of putting any speed into their shots because they're thin and then we end up getting these horrible duffs in the lip, those kind of ideas. So we really need to conquer that fear and speed is what we need. Like you need a good level of commitment. And what's gonna allow you to keep your speed on these shots, so keep the speed in there so you're really getting through the sand and chucking it out is the ability to maintain loft on the club face. Those two things really are just the essence of you improving your bunker play overnight. Keeping loft, maintaining speed. You are getting out 99.9999% of the time. So running through some basic setup for you. Obviously lots of people have been taught to have their own feet open and those kind of idea with the bunkers. What I'd like you to do is open the face, so literally twist loft on the face and then hold. Don't hold it, then twist loft on that changes your grip. So make sure you twist the loft on the face and then hold the open loft. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna aim feet parallel to the line I want the ball to go along. I'm gonna swing parallel to the line I want that ball to go on. Obviously it's on an arc, but I'm not trying to hit like, massively across it, anything like that. I'm gonna embed my feet a little bit to sink me down. I've positioned the club, obviously not touching the sand, but I'm kind of aiming to hit the sand around an inch or two behind the ball. It's like, basically it's behind the ball and we'll come to that as we go on a bit further. Then what I'm gonna do is an arm swing, which goes from shoulder to shoulder and make sure I've got plenty of body rotation while at the same time releasing right foot. That ball shoots out nice and high, getting over any lip, and makes a half decent distance. But what it is, it's a full committed swing with kept loft on the club. Now, if you're not good at keeping loft on the club, which lots of people aren't, they get the club turning over and then that club kind of digs and they get those duffy ones. Great way of feeling this is on the way through, try and make sure that that face is pointing at your face. So when you come through, if you turn that club over, the club face can be pointing over here somewhere. So I want you to come through. When you finish, arms up to sh above shoulders, make sure that face is pointing more at your face and that will allow you to keep that loft on that club with that speed. As long as you're hitting that sand first, it's just gonna come out nearly every time. Now this shot can be applied to many different situations. So I've got a situation now where say, I'm gonna pretend the pin's all the way down at the front of this green. It's like a 30 yard, 25, 30 yard green side bunker shot. Same idea, twist the face, then grip. Aiming parallel to the line, I want that ball to fly along. I'm gonna swing just along my body lines, shoulder to shoulder swing, plenty of speed. Face is gonna come through, try and keep it pointed at me. That ball's coming out nice and long and running up down the green. All I've done here is use my 50 degree, where before I was using my more lofted 58, you can use your 56s or your 60. I'm changing the loft to suit the situation. Making sure you're using the different lofts that you have using this one technique. Again, you're not gonna stay in here. You're gonna get out every time. So now we're getting out of the bunker, hopefully every time, within reason. You're also now gonna see that the proximities from the Arcos data are quite different between the two demographics of golfers. So people who struggle to break 80, they're averaging 26 foot away from 15 yards away from the flag in a bunker. Where the golfers who are shooting in the 70s more consistently, they're averaging 20 feet away from 15 yards in a bunker. Let's show you some skills that you can use to get you from some different positions and 
make sure you're making the right choices. Now you're getting it out each time. So this technique can be applied to nearly every bunker shot. Other things you're gonna need to think about. If I'm coming out to a flag over here, but beyond the flag, there's water, there's trouble, there are drop-offs, whatever there may be, I might choose not to go at that flag. We're not very good at our bunkers. Going at the flag isn't always gonna be your best option. Bearing in mind, you're not that good at hitting the ball that close. So choosing to come out to the where the fatter part of the green is and just accepting that a bogey or whatever score is the score is gonna be way better than being in trouble and then hitting it into more trouble which is what people who are struggling to break 80 are very good at doing. We need to reduce those ideas. Now, the other thing I want you to think about is different lies. So this bunker is a little bit more wet from where they've watered the green. So all that's gonna happen, I'm gonna play the same technique, shoulder to shoulder kind of swing, get the face pointing that loft on me. But this one might come out lower and run a little bit more. So I might keep my swing nice and long, but I might just ease off some of the speed. It might not be such a thump down at the bottom knowing it's going to come out that little bit quicker. And then the last thing that I'd really like to see you do more of is just over-exaggerate the body rotation. So many of you get in bunkers and it's an arm drop into the sand, a pick up and drop. Hopefully you're going to stab it out. Really make sure that as you get your arms going up to shoulder and shoulder, that you're rotating hips and chest away from the target, through to the target. As long as you're hitting that sand before and getting in a bunker and practicing trying to hit that sand before is a great way of doing this. Making sure you're confident to keep that speed in and keep that body rotation going. Keep it really, really turning. The other key point of being better and lowering your scores is actually to avoid these. And if you want to learn how to avoid these, this video has got all the information you need in the Break 8 and series.